0.6p, what this number even mean? I had the same reaction when I first saw them. They looked confusing, frustrating, and honestly, pointless. But after years of working with them, I realized this little number carry a lot of meaning. And in this video, I'm going to demystify them for you. By the end, you will not only understand accuracy classes, you will be able to explain them to your colleagues with confidence. Hello and welcome to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Gaurav Joshi. On this channel, I simplify switchgear, substation and power system. If you enjoy learning complex concepts in the easiest way possible, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It really helps you and it helps me bring more of this breakdowns your way. Now let's talk about the accuracy classes of instrument transformer. We use instrument transformer that is current and voltage transformer to step down the current and voltage of the grid. And for a very valid reason as well, we are using meters and relay which needs a small input. For example, a relay or a meter cannot process 2000 ampere current flowing in the system. The relay needs a small input, let's say 1 ampere or 5 ampere. And hence, we use current transformer to step down the current. Same thing for voltage transformer as well. So the output of current and voltage transformer is given to a relay for protection purpose and also to a meter for measurement purpose. Now protection and measurement are two very different things. Protection demand that a current transformer, for example, should keep generating the output even when the fault occurs and high current flows through the system. Because if it does not, then the relay may not get the signal and fault would not be cleared. The breaker will not trip simply. This can lead to dangerous situations. Well, on the other hand, the measurement demands accuracy. The protection is okay with less accuracy as well. No problem there. Because if the metering is not accurate, then the billing would, uh, billing would not be accurate as well. Also, metering demands that when the fault occurs, the current transformer should not generate the output so that the meters connected on the secondary would be protected. So the two things, protection and metering are very, very different. Their characteristics are very different. And that is the reason we have different cores in instrument transformer. We have a dedicated core for protection and dedicated core for metering. And based on these characteristics, based on how much errors are allowed in the core, different international standards like IEC or IEEE have defined the accuracy classes for instrument transformers. For example, let's consider a voltage transformer. We will be using this one for giving the inputs to relay or for protection purpose and for meters for protection purpose. So for sure, we need two different cores for this, one dedicated for protection and another for metering. If I give same types of characteristics for both the cores, then it will be a problem. You will understand that in few minutes. In instrument transformer, one very important parameter is a ratio error. In simple term, it means the difference between actual voltage ratio and the ideal voltage ratio. Higher the ratio error, lesser is the accuracy of the voltage transformer or even uh, the current transformer. So if I give the core with high ratio error for a metering purpose, I'll be getting inaccurate results. But the same core might be okay for protection as there we are not bothered very much about the accuracy. So the IEC standard has defined dedicated metering classes and dedicated protection classes. Here is the example of our voltage transformer. Metering classes of voltage transformer as defined by IEC standards are 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 1, and 3. This basically indicates the percentage of ratio error allowed at the rated voltage and rated burden. If you don't know what is a burden on instrument transformer, then you can check out my dedicated video on that. Uh, you'll be getting a link for it down in the description. Now, if you look at the table given in the IEC 61869-3 for the accuracy class, things will be very clear to you. The first column indicates the class name. The second indicates the percentage of ratio error allowed at rated voltage and burden. 
and the last one indicates the phase displacement. Phase displacement is nothing but the difference between primary and secondary current and uh, the voltage vectors. And if you observe, you will see that the accuracy class name is basically the percentage of ratio errors allowed. So whenever the core has a ratio error as 0.2% and the phase displacement as per the IEC standard, they are classified as 0.2 class core, which will be used for metering purpose because the ratio error allowed is very, very minimal. Similarly, for protection purpose, IEC has defined two classes, 3P and 6P. Again, the number indicates the percentage of ratio errors allowed. Here is the example table from the IEC for protection class. For 3P class, the ratio error allowed is 3%. Now, if you compare it with 0.2 metering class, it was only 0.2%. So there is significant amount of difference between ratio error allowed uh, between the metering core and the protection core. And that's why you should not be using the protection core for metering purpose and vice versa. You can also see the phase displacement uh, is given for 3P and 6P classes. Similarly, for current transformer IEC 61869-2 has defined the metering and protection class. The logic remains the same as we discussed for the voltage transformer. For metering core, the accuracy class indicates the percentage of ratio error allowed, same as that of uh, the voltage transformer. Here are the classes defined by the IEC standard. Here, ratio error instead of at rated voltage, it is defined at the rated primary current. The primary current could be 5%, 20%, 100% or even 120%. For protection class, IEC has defined 5P and 10P class and also a special type of class which is PS or PX. Now, I won't be talking about this in this video as I have already discussed about the accuracy class for current transformer in a dedicated video. If you are interested in knowing more on that, uh, you will get link for that as well down in the description. You can for sure go and check that out. So I hope the fog has lifted and the accuracy classes don't look so scary anymore. Let me know in the comment section, do you think CTs and VTs are part of the switchgear? Let me know your thoughts uh, uh, in the comment section below. If this video gave you clarity, give it a like and share it with your colleagues. It might just save them some frustration. And if you are serious about mastering CTs and VTs, I've got a dedicated playlist uh, linked in the description check it out after this video so that's all for this video guys i hope you understood the concept i'll definitely see you in the next one with another interesting uh, topic and, and the video but till then keep watching keep learning